Want to learn how to make Yondalo Farm go from this to this to this in just two months? Well then stay tuned. Study, we're visiting a long-time Dalo farmer at Vudi Road South in Nosori. Sunia Rokole Kudu has been farming for over 40 years in his Matangali land. Starting off with sugarcane, Sunia then moved on to farming rice after the sugar mills in the area had closed down. After that, he started a small-scale farm for cassava and Dalo on the same piece of land. Oh, this land here, we just, I just prepared for planting the Dalo. The variety is Uro Nibolu. This is I prepared now to plant that. This is about our heka. I prepared this land about uh, three months ago now because I didn't start planting because uh, it depends on the weather, because of the rain. I need uh, to stop the rain and I didn't rise so we can put a line, line from here so we can I can plant Dandalo. Sunia reached out to the Ekem team for advice on how to ensure his crops would grow better considering he had been farming on the same land for a long time. I tagged along with Manda and Sayed to see exactly what type of program Sunia needed. While Manda had already taken the lead taking the soil pH readings throughout the field, Sayed gave us a little demo. 5.5 for Dalo, you need the best pH reading, maybe 5.5 .5 or above, it's good. Especially it's too acidic, you need some lime. We, we've got two kinds of lime. There's in powder, we have in powder and uh, liquid. They both are certified organic. And uh, a, a high rainfall area will, will always be slightly acidic. So a high rainfall area, you need some powdered lime. Uh, for dry uh, land, you need uh, liquid lime. My friend Manda did the soil uh, testing. He'll give you the full report uh, based on this uh, land. The width of the land is 23 steps, and the length is uh, 285 steps. So taking a pH reading every five steps along one straight line, the lowest reading is three, and the highest reading I've got is 5.6, oh. which means uh, roughly the soil is acidic. Uh, it's 5.6, even though the dalo will grow, but to get an a optimum yield, a maximum yield out of this plot, you need to condition the soil. Even though he's done his uh, land prep three times harrowing and three times plow, just because of the current weather pattern that we've been going through the last two weeks, you see most of the soil that is broken up by the tractor during the last week of rain, it is sort of clustered together again. So he'll be waiting for good weather before he can plow and line before planting. But to get a good yield out of this plot, he needs to use lime. Okay. And he'll need a mineral base fertilizer which uh, we take into account, we are going into our cyclone season now. So we'll be facing more rain, which means he has to choose the right fertilizer to use. If he uses conventional fertilizer, most of that will be washed away by the rain when, we, when the crop enters into the rainy season. So the best option for him is to go with the mineral-based fertilizers that doesn't leach out during the rainy season. What kind of mineral fertilizers can you recommend? For him, he'll be doing root crops. So he'll be, the mineral fertilizer that we have known, used to be known as Alrock number no. three. Now it's known as carbon mineral with trace elements. It has NPK plus 13 trace elements. But the beautiful, beautiful thing about this fertilizer, it's all certified organic. So the mineral in it doesn't leach itself. See, in this area, Leaching is the main problem. We don't have much sunshine, but we have plenty of rain. So leaching becomes a big problem when you choose the fertilizer. So he needs to understand the different fertilizers 
and how they work for him to choose the right one that will give him the maximum output. So mineral fertilizers will, and for taro it needs, during chip formation it will require a lot of phosphate. So with him, right now I'm just going through, walking across the field looking at the soil condition. It's better for him to use carbon mineral TE with prophosphate and if he needs to side dress a little bit, later he can go in with the with the KT blend, which is the sustainable. It's a more quick release compared to the other because the NPK in it, it's chemical, but it's coated with organic carbon. And another key factor for him in this land is the liquid organic soil activator. So you, if you can see, see the small taro seedlings are coming out of the ground, which means that growth is good. But he needs the, the mineral, the soil activator to reactivate and boost the the activities of the microbes in the ground that will help unlock the, the lockup in the ground. And that helps the, the plant root system on its daily Newton uptake to get a better crop. This is, this is a variety of Nalo. I mean, it, it's suitable for flood in this area. And the beauty about this plant, this Nalo, this variety, it produces a lot of suckers. And the suckers, it, it's, it's not like the other variety that it's attached to the mother plant. It sort of grows out like a vine, yeah. and you can always pull it off. Pull it off. So I've been working with a couple of farmers now. For example, I've been sharing with you. There's a guy who harvested three tons of urnibon mm -mm. last week. Uh, Penny Moy comes and buys it from him. Farm gate price one dollar eighty a kg. Apart from harvesting that plot, which gives him three tons, during the crop cycle, the farm already sold about almost 7,000 suckers from the same plot. Which means he's getting money out of the suckers mm. even before harvesting the mother plant <laughs> for export. <laughs> See, that's the beauty about this plant. Yeah. And for people who are looking like on small scale, if you, for example, if you take, you plant a plot of 500 plants, before that plant matures, you'll be able to plant two or three more plots of 500 pulling the planting material from the, the same suckers, 500. Yeah. The suckers. See, that's the beauty about this, yeah. this variety. And Old it's well world. suited for this flatland area. Mm. I mean, he, he, he knows, I mean, he's been selling suckers. Mm. And he knows Urnibono, it produces a lot of suckers. Right. And by pulling the suckers out, while the mother plant is still growing, see, you, you are, you, you're taking excess growth out so that mm. The mother plant produces a good sized tuber when it comes to harvesting yeah. time. And in the process, you are getting money out of those suckers that you pull out. Yeah. So Mr. Rocco Lakutu's farm is our first yeah, case study. Yeah. And uh, over the next uh, few weeks, we're going to be actually following his journey and seeing the program that uh, Aircam put together for him. And, uh, you know, looking at his land, it is flat land. It is prone to flooding, as Manda has mentioned. And um, so we need to know what kind of weed killers, what kind of fertilizers, what kind of agro inputs he needs to use on this to plant his Uruni Vonus. So over the next few weeks, we'll see how it's going. I'm sure someone watching right now is maybe going through a similar experience. So this might be a good learning curve for you. And if you need more information sooner than that, then you can always contact Eggcam. Um, Amanda and say it will be happy to come out and have a look at your farm and give you some advice. All right, so we'll catch you in the next um, the next time we're here following up on Mr. Rocco Lakuta's farm. And you know what, Uru Nivono is actually my favorite dalo, and I'm just gonna ask him for some once we, it's ready to harvest. <laughs> Coming up, we're visiting Sunia on the day of planting. Following the program Akem had put together for him, the first thing Sunia needed to do was add the powdered lime and the carbon mineral fertilizer, formerly known as Alrock No. 3. After he had done that, the next step was to condition the planting material in some growth formula. So the lime and the tea plant already there. So already in the hole. So you put this on top. That's it. After that, just give a little bit of soil to build up just the bottom of this, that's it. 
like that and leave it. Wow. Yeah. Manda, what uh, <laughs> is the purpose of that uh, growth formula? It, 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 this is a, a blend of uh, plant vitamins and uh, and uh, hormones that will help enhance the root formation on the on this planted material. What it does, it boosts the formation of roots uh, in the plant uh, the planting material. So by by enhancing the formation of uh, root system, it sort of boosts the germination rate. So it uh, sometimes the germination rate of planting materials is not that good. But with this, you can get 100% germination rate. So once your germination is good, then you can look after the plant on its uh, nutrition uh, side of it. As you mentioned, we already applied the, the lime and the organic fertilizer, the mineral-based fertilizer in the ground as the base. So when the planting material, this Ndalo planting material goes into the ground, it's sitting right on top of those two. And then we put a little bit of uh, soil just to mound it up, just to hold uh, the planting material in place. See, lime, when we tested the soil, it was a bit acidy. That's why we added lime as a base application in the ground. That is part of soil conditioning, just to help uh, neutralize the acidity in the soil. And you use powdered lime? Yes, we use powdered lime because at the time when we planted it, we were experiencing a lot of rain in this area. And believe me, when it rains, it really rains. So when we use powdered lime, at least when it rains, it works its way into the ground. Mm -hmm. So and then we add the mineral-based fertilizer, the, the mineral fertilizer as the base uh, nutrient supplier to the plant. So at least when the plant root system germinates, Whatever it requires is already there. Four weeks after Sunia planted the Ndalo, Manda and I went back to see how his farm was coming along. And boy, did it look good. Four weeks from now, yeah. it started growing up. Eh? Great farm yeah. and wet it up. So we come now. This is the fourth week. We try to uh, build up the soil onto the every branches, every tree right. of Ndalo. That's what we're doing now. After this, we're going to put on another, uh, what do you call a uh, tie? Soil activator. A soil activator. So we're going to put it later. After nice. this, after building up the... So, because it's been raining a lot lately, yeah. um, was this place covered in water? Uh, yes, only one side eh, from here. Yeah? Only one side. All right on the other hand. Right. That hand there, there's a flood there on the, the other hand. But, but the crops on that side, did they grow? They yeah, grow. Oh. Coming up. Okay. Pandalo. Okay. Only Pandalo coming up. Manda, what do you think? What, yeah. from your observations? This is good. Remember, we were here during the planting time. Yeah. So we follow exactly the program of lime and the carbon mineral as the base. We were dipping the yeah. Pandalo suckers on growth form and we were planting. It took him and the other guy two days the day 10th and 11th last month mm. to imagine all the, the plants in that area and towards the land was underwater but still after that when we came back we, we saw the the shoots coming up now yeah. just look at it look at it the right through to the end yeah. look at the green and you can tell the the uruni from the from the, from the week, even from the week just look at the color the green of the leaf that's because of the lime and the Alrock number three, that's its base application. Yeah. So it's feeding from here, it's, it's a different green and you can see the lines. Even though the weed, you can see the lines continues right to the end. Yeah. He's already applied the TT blend, as he said. And you can see the color of the weeds around the, the Indalo. It's sort of a different from the weeds in the middle. The green, the texture, which means they have also benefiting from that. So that's why he's doing this. He's doing with a hoe. Kutari, eh? Ho hoeing, just to mound it up, mound it up with the soil to cover that fertilizer and the, and the plant. And by doing that, he's also doing the first weed control on this. After the application of the Protex Citrus soil activator, he'll have to do another weed control because we've issued them with a ZA. It's a selective weed for grass weeds only. This is grass weeds. And this is a broadleaf. And taro is also a broadleaf. Za won't kill this and won't, won't harm taro. It will control all these grass weeds. So that will come in after he's doing this. Now as a farmer, if you are not well versed with weed aside knowledge, it could be detrimental to your crop survival. So how can you determine which weed aside is right for you? 
Manda tells us more. Right now they're using a uh, chemical like uh, glufosinate ammonium, which is uh, um, Samurai 200. Yeah. And glyphosate. Samurai 200 has uh, contact and systemic uh, properties like glyphosate. It also kills the broadleaf as well yeah. if it comes from. And there are farmers, we have farmers coming to our doorstep complaining. See, I tell the other day one farmer came in from uh, Serea. He lost about 20,000 tausala in a plot by using samurai. It kills, it kills the weeds, it also kills them. But with za, it controls the grass weeds, yeah. it doesn't harm the broadleaf. And Taro being a broadleaf, he, he won't have any problem with it. But the, the grass weeds are the ones that are coming up quickly. Mm. And they are the ones that, uh, this grass grows three times as fast as compared to now. Mm. And they're very aggressive in terms of feeding. So to prevent, to make sure that Andalo benefit from all that fertilizer, yeah. he'll have to spray that, to control this so that it gives a chance for Andalo to keep on. Yeah. As long as Andalo comes up, you know, it, it get well established yeah. so that the growth will be uniform. Right now, it's, it's beautiful, if you can see, it's just uniform right through. Yeah, love it. <laughs> And the color, you notice the green. Yeah. The green of the uh, Andalo compared to the witch is different. And you can see the rose right through to there. Yeah. And imagine what he has done at his age. He's doing this manually on his own. After mounting up on the Andalo, yeah. he'll follow up with the Protex Citrus Sulecivita. Okay. It'll be interesting to see the difference after that. Okay. Because Protex Citrus, you will give it the added boost it needs to require to, no, to boost the growth. Yeah. After all, the, the two applications is already there. But well, I'm going to leave you in the good hands of Manda uh, and Ekem, and uh, we'll be back in the next few weeks to see absolutely. how your farm's going. Thank you. <laughs> Stick around to see what Sunia's farm looks like two months after planting. And now for the big reveal. Check out Sunia's farm two months after we first visited from the day of planting. Sunia's Uruni Von Undalo farm is most definitely an eye catcher amongst neighbors and friends, all wondering what he's done to sustain such healthy looking plants despite the rain and floods TC Yasa brought. This is, uh, this now has been two months now, exactly, since last when we planted. We planted at the end of last year and uh, at the beginning of the cyclone season and we have a lot of rain during the planting time. And despite all that rain, the flooding that we have in this area for a couple of weeks, we, we've seen that some of the uh, planting materials died out, but uh, it's more than uh, almost 90%, more than 90% uh, grown and just here and you can see right now the way, the way it is growing. Even just talking to him, Sonia, he's, he's happy with what he's looking at. This is, and uh, for me, it's a heads off to him the way he, he keep up with the program. I visited him two weeks ago. He was in the field uh, hoeing, cleaning the weeds. And he did this side dressing of the, the second application of TT blend last week. And as we can see, he mounted it up after side dressing. And uh, believe me, I was telling you when I came up two weeks ago, I can clearly see the, the distinction between the two rows. I can see the, the ground when, he's, uh, when he has uh, finished hoeing and cleaning. But now when I came back, just look at that. I, you can see, you can see the ground because the, the leaves have formed after side dressing. So it has a, it's a big difference from two weeks ago, what I'm seeing today. And, I'm just talking, talking to him today, I'm just happy for me, I'm happy and I'm telling him, man, what you've done, you, you, you've inspired me because I, I'm still in the first stage of land preparation and I'm just talking to him what he's doing right now. Sunia, so, tell me, how, how is it going for you? Yeah, yeah. see how they grow now, it's growing now. I follow the program they've been given to me too by the AGM department. So that's why I follow it properly. I followed it, well, everything they was told me to in that program to what do you call that to to lay up there the, the fertilizer uh, you know time may not uh, put it one hit I put it time to time follow the program that is given to me the Tay Tay blend and the lime and also the sea protect 
After that, I, I, all, I all do that. I always do that, yeah. See how it grows now by that following that program. I was, I was uh, listen to that advice, yeah. This is the result here yeah, by following that uh, program that's given to me, yeah. You've planted dalo before, yes. right? Have you seen a difference from uh, your previous plantings and this one where you followed a program given to you by Ekin? Oh yes, a big difference. Big difference for the... I started planting dalo no long time ago, since uh, many years ago. Uh, <clears throat> from now, it's a big difference. By the healthy of the uh, coming up with this uh, terroir, by using that uh, uh, manure fertilizer coming from the to follow the program of that. This is a big different from the last time I I plant, even a very weak to grow, you know, because uh, no advice, no what he called, uh, no, nobody advised me. So what I know, only my experience, I do that. You uh, know, sometimes I put uh, poultry manure, that is before. But now this kind of manure is very healthy, you know. When I lay up here, see how it is grown, this is two, two months ago. How big is coming now? Very good. So happy about that. Now, Manda, uh, you were showing us a little bit about that uh, the caterpillars that have. Yes, uh, the, the caterpillars of the leaves. That's what catches my eye when yeah. I walk in. I saw the few leaves and I went scouting. So that's what I did. I always did. I always, when I see a sign, so what I did, I look at the, the underside of the leaf. And, and uh, I can see that's what I pointed out to him the importance of. Um, spring uh, insecticide, so I'll put a program for him on how to combat that because otherwise those little bugs, once they feed, they multiply numbers and they keep on feeding and especially after the cyclone season, you know, we have rain, sun, rain, sun, this is the best opportunity for them to come and feed because they know whatever we do now because we have more rain, the rains we can wash it off. Mm. So now then we'll have a, to come up with a with a program for him, including the insecticide, which will be select for that special caterpillars, with the use of a X77 sticker. Now the trick with the X77 sticker so that it makes the chemical stays. Even if it drains, it doesn't wash off. So these little bugs, when they come in, they know after the rain, if you spray any chemical, it'll get washed off the rain. So they'll always come back after the rain. So when they come back, they'll be surprised when they eat the chemical is still there, it will affect them and kill them. Because we need to control those caterpillars, otherwise they'll spread yeah. from plant to plant and slowly. Because as, as you've seen what they've done there, they, they start feeding on the green tissue of the plant, which captures sunlight for manufacturing food. And once they do that, all is left is just like a, a, a layer, it's more like a plastic layer, it's a cuticle. And that, that takes away the, the life of the plant. The plant has, has mm. captured sunlight through chlorophyll, through the green layer tissue. That what's capture sunlight and manufactures food for the plant. And if you take that off, it won't be able to process its food because it needs sunlight. And these are the important role play in a plant's life. Green. And that's where they are taking. So we need to control that. If you're interested in purchasing any of the mentioned products, you can visit the following EGCAM distributors. Contact Eggchem Limited on the following numbers. You could even visit in person. They're located on Wylander Road in Lamy.